Hello everyone and welcome to Merlin's Manor. Today I'm going to be showing how to play the solo mode of the Castles of Burgundy. Now this is the original solo mode that came out a while back. Uh, this one is a fairly simple solo mode to play. You're going to be mostly playing uh, similar to multiplayer except for victory points aren't the main goal of the game. Rather the main goal is to fill your entire duchy. All 37 tiles in the normal 25 turns that you're going to have to take. I'm going to go over a few different setup things here to start out with. First of all, you're going to be using board 33 or board 34, which is on the other side here, for the solo mode. And the 33 is the easier one to do, so I recommend starting with board 33. You're also going to get one silver, two workers, and three goods. Now, there are going to be three random goods that are going to be drawn. And the thing to note about the goods is that you can have as many goods as you want to. Uh, in the multiplayer version, you can only have three different types of goods, and you can stack on top of those different types. Here you can have as many as you want, and you're going to mainly be using those for a special benefit I'll get into in a moment. You still can sell goods of a, of a type to be able to get one silver and some victory points, but you're really going to want to use them for mainly for a special way. And then also you're going to take one of your castles, and it can be uh, the miniatures like I have here, or it can be you can use the, the red hex tiles, or if you're using the older version, it's going to be a dark green hex tile. And you put it on any of the red hexes on here. You're not going to get the benefit in the moment. You're just going to put that out there, and that's going to be your starting space, and you're going to expand out from that. I'm going to put it here so that I have a lot of different things that I can focus on here at the beginning. And I have a quick way to expand this way and this way. And so that is the basic setup of your board over here. Over here, you're going to put your turn order marker, since you're not actually going to be uh, having a turn order for this game, on the 50 victory point spot. And that's actually going to be a goal to get to to get a special bonus. And you're going to put your regular player token here at the start of the victory point uh, track. And I'll get into the, a minute what's going to be special about that. Now let's go ahead and go over some of the different special rules for the solo mode here. Uh, first of all, whenever you place a ship into your duchy, you are going to take all goods from one of the depots. So let's say we had this set up right here. And you're going to, so we definitely want to take the two because that's going to be more valuable. And then the rest of the goods are going to be discarded from the game. And then after you take those two goods, you're going to have an option. If you have at least five goods stored up, you can exchange those five goods to gain a black hex tile from the depot, which you are going to put face down into one of your key spaces here. And then later you can put that into your duchy as a wild. It can go on any color uh, adjacent to something you've already placed, of course, but you're not going to get the benefit from that. It's only going to be filling a space to be able to claim regions, as well as in the end to be able to win the game by filling out your entire duchy with all 37 tiles. And so that can become really powerful, especially later in the game, when you're going to have issues sometimes getting certain tiles and you realize there's not going to be enough of a certain tile in that last round. Uh, that's especially going to be valuable to use it for that purpose. And so that's what happens when you place one of those in. Now, monastery tiles are going to score victory points immediately instead of at the end of the game if there are a victory point scoring uh, tile there. And so that's, that's important to keep in mind. Here's an example of one. You score four victory points for each one of these buildings that are in your duchy, and you're going to score that immediately. So early game, you're not going to, be able to score a lot of those things because you won't have them in there, and you're never going to score them again. And so you want to make sure that you have something in there if you're going to do that. And of course, you're going to want those points anyway uh, early game because points at the end of the game don't matter. Another thing that's going to happen is when your victory point token gets all the way up here to the 50 mark, you are then going to immediately return this to the start. Any extra, vic extra victory points you would have gained are lost. And then you're going to move this back five. And then you get to take a dice action of any number that you want to. Uh, similar, same thing as if you had placed a castle into your duchy. You get to go ahead and do that then. And I've put a little red hex tile up here to remind myself of that. 
And then next time you only have to get to 45 in order for that to happen. Another thing, you can also spend silver to advance your token at the cost of one silver per victory point. So if I was right here, I might want to go ahead and spend two silver to be able to make that happen, make that trigger, so that an over victory points wouldn't be lost in that case. And that would come down just like that. And then another big bonus that you're going to get, and this is a very important one, is the best one of the game is when you complete a color that's all of the beiges or all of the blues or all the yellows etc you are going to then get to choose one of these four tiles that are in the black depot and put it immediately into your duchy somewhere that's connected to where you already are so it has to it has to go by placement rules and you put it straight into your duchy and you gain the benefit of that tile immediately if it's an immediate benefit or it's an ongoing benefit you'll, you'll gain it just like normal uh, for having that in your duchy and so that's a very powerful action uh, the unfortunate thing is you're only going to be able to do this once you complete a color and the last round you're still only going to have the option of four things in here once all four are gone you're not going to be able to get any more and so if you're waiting to the last round to complete all of your colors you're going to lose at least two of the benefits there and you won't be able to spend silver to buy any extras either if you're using them for all that benefit. And so that's something to keep in mind there that you want to try and make some of those happen earlier. And so those are the, the big differences there as far as uh, the gameplay goes. The rest of it plays pretty much like a multiplayer game, except for one thing I'm going to go over right now as we get started. And that is how it starts. You're always going to have to roll all three dice because you're always going to be the first player. And you're going to put those in just like normal. And then this five here, just like in the multiplayer, you're going to put a tile on the five. And then you're going to remove the top one. And unfortunately, they're removing that. I almost want to say that was a practice roll, but that wouldn't be right. And so they remove the top tile of that location. If there hadn't been any here, like this has been the case, then they would have removed the top tile of the next location clockwise. And it'll just go around until they can find one. And so that this is the beginning of our game here. I just rolled a, a six and a five. So let's see what I can do with a six and a five. And of course, you use them, just in case you're not familiar, to gain things from the number related to the dice you're using. So I could gain from either of these right now with a six and the five. And if I needed to adjust it, I can use workers to adjust it up or down by one. Let's see what I want to grab here. These sheep are looking pretty good as there's four of them and you'll score victory points based on those. Or I could go after this. I'm, I'm going to go after the sheep. They're calling to me for some reason. Okay, so we put the sheep there. And then I need to figure out what else I want to do with the five. So this isn't going to be very handy here because of the fact that I'm not going to score any points for it. I might just adjust my five down. I really wish that mine was in play still. But I would have grabbed that up in a heartbeat. I think I'm going to adjust down to a four. To go ahead and grab this ship tile and put it in my key space. And that is how a round, how a turn goes. We roll again. Simple as that. I got a four and a one. And they got a two, so we put that there, and this goes away. And so now what am I going to do with my four and a one? I think with the one, I'm going to get this building. Like that. And then I need to figure out what I'm going to do with my four. I am going to go ahead and spend this worker. And I'm just spending the workers. Turn that into a three. So I can place this right there not the most effective use of my first couple turns but we're going to figure out what's going to happen here okay and so now i get to grab either of these uh i'm going to grab one that i have in common in case i do want to sell at some point and then this goes away and i don't have five to sell at the moment so i don't get to take that action and so the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and roll a dice again you got a two and a six and that too. And by the way, in case you don't realize, I ha you have to have the number that's on here. That's why I had to adjust the number down from a four to a three to place it. 
So we put this on the two. And bye bye, cancel. We're getting rid of the, the ones that don't come out as much. So now let's see if I can play something in. I can. I'm going to use the two to play this tile, which is the boarding house, which allows you to gain four workers when you place it. So I'm going to put that right on the two spot here, gaining four workers, which as I'm using them, it's going to come in a lot. It's going to come in very handy. And then for the six. Oh, no, I actually should have used the six. I'm going to use the six, actually, to do that. So I can stretch, one, so I can stretch out more. And for the second reason, I can put this in with the two. Oh, and I forgot to give myself victory points when I scored this blue tile here. Whenever you fill out an entire section, you're going to score victory points. And so you score the victory points based on this track here. And based on what round you're in, you're going to score most victory points early in the game. So I'm going to score 10 plus 1, which is 11. And then now for putting this in, I got my four workers. And then I'm going to, going to place with the two, this here. It's going to score me four points for the sheep because there are four sheep on there. One, two, three, four. And then because I filled in an entire green region, I'm going to then score one point plus another 10. It's going to bring me up to 20. 26. And so that is as easy as that is. And when I fill this one in, I'll get bonuses for that if I can fill that in. I'm one away on that one, too. A six and a three, and three is the white die. So we put that there, and bye bye, goats. Now, what do I want? From the six, I could grab the. Carpenter's Workshop, which allows you to take a building tile when you play it. That does sound like fun. So I put that one into my duchy. And then with the three, I think I'm going to take the bank. There we go. Last one of this round. Three, a five, and a three. Oh, that's going to be unfortunate. So we put it here, but because there's nothing here, it's going to go clockwise. And I was wanting to get this with the other action, but that's okay. I'll do something differently. So now I have a five and a three. Let's see. Unfortunately, neither of those take a five or a three. Could grab this one here. And maybe wait till later to, to be able to score it. Actually, let's go ahead and turn this one. Let's turn this one in uh, from a three to a four using one of these workers. I'm going to put the bank right there. It's going to give me two coins. Maybe I just do take that for five and see what happens later. Uh, anyway, I scored this though, so let's do that real quick. I get three points for it being a two size. One, two, three, plus 10 for scoring it here in the first round. It's going to bring us up to 39. Ah, uh, I do know what I want to do. I have a plan. I'm going to spend two coins to be able to buy from here. I'm going to buy this ship tile. And now I'm going to spend a worker, turn it into a six to go right here. And that's going to allow me to, first of all, I filled that. Let's not forget to score victory points. It's going to be one and then another 10. Just hit the 50. So that's going to come down five. That's going to come down here. I get a free red action, which, do I just grab a ship? I just grab a ship. Oh, let's put that over there so I don't forget that. That's belonging there. I want to also, I'm grabbing these two here, and then I can spend them to get a free uh, one of these things to go face down. One, two, three, four, five. So those are going to give me a free one of these to go face down. Let's just do this one. And because I got to the victory point area, I get to do the red action, which I am feeling like just grabbing this. Why not? It's one less thing that I have to worry about next round. Oh, no, because it can be an anything action. 
Oh, but there's nothing to use for that. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this. That, that that's what I'm doing. Okay, that's the end of the first round. Again, that was that last action was for me reaching 50 on the victory points, and the free uh, wild hextile came from me being able to sell five goods or exchange five goods. Now the new round, we're gonna put these out. We're gonna clear any tiles that are still in here. Oh, by the way, I forget, failed to mention at the beginning of the game, I have these in here to remind me that I get a wild tile when I sell my five goods. So that's just another thing that's in here for a reminder. These are part of the, uh, the inn expansion, and these are wilds when you use them in the inn. So that's the way I remember that. To get all that out of the way, all the tiles are cleared off. We're going to put out new tiles. And the way we do this is we go ahead and we put yellow on yellow. There's going to be two of those. All the black tiles go right here in the center depot. All color-coded, so it's easy for you to figure it all out. Green on green, there's going to be two of these as well. Beige, the most populous color. One there. One there. One there, and one here. And then not in the bags, we've got a mine, a ship, a castle, and another ship. And I believe that's all of the tiles. It is. So now we're going to score eight points when we complete a region. It goes down every time. Start off the new round by rolling. We got two and five, and four is there. Let's go ahead and put this on the four, and bye bye, ship. Didn't need the ship anyway. So now I have a five and a two. The very first thing I'm going to do, I need to make space. I'm going to use the two just to make space. And I think I'm going to have to adjust it downward to a one. No, wait, no, I don't. I'm going to put this here as a two. Oh, huh. I'm going to need to... Actually, that might not be what I do. Then I'm just going to have to make space again. So actually, I'm going to adjust that downward to a 1 so that I can put this out. And then I'm going to resolve all that, which is going to be a victory point, plus another 8 victory points for being in the second round. Then we get to choose a good. That one goes away. That's all because I don't have enough to, to exchange. And then the next thing I'm going to use the five to grab up this mine before it goes away because we missed our opportunity in the first round. So the very first thing they did was grab the mine. And that's all I'm going to do with this particular turn. So we got a five and a three as our dice and a four. Man, took both of the fours just like that. So the next thing I want to do with my five, I'm going to place the mine. And mines go ahead and give you a coin at the beginning of each round. And then my three here, uh, because I did the things that way I did them, I have to spend multiple workers. Otherwise, I wouldn't have. But I think, well, what's in three right now? Three has a church, which allows you to take a mine, monastery, or castle tile. Yeah, I'm going to use the three to grab that. I'm keeping my key spaces filled, which isn't always the best idea. Okay, so a three. Bye-bye, piggies. Now I have a six and a six. Uh, okay, that's not bad. I needed a six. I need a six anyway. So I can either play the Carpenter's Workshop, which allowed me to take a building tile, which is going to be either the bank or that one. Or I can play this, which will just allow me to take that castle tile or one of the monasteries. I am linked to where I can start putting castles in. I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place down the one that's going to get me a castle. So it's going to go there. Oh, I didn't score for the mine, did I? 
And I got the mine. I should have gone 1 plus 8 is 18. I always forget to score these little single ones because I'm not used to having the singles. Okay. So we're going to put that there. I'm going to get this church tile. I'm not church tile, castle tile. Replacing the church. And that's all that's going to happen on that part. So that was a 6 to go there. And then for my other 6, you know, just grabbing this building tile. No, I can't grab that building tile. I don't have space. Ooh. What have I done? So I think all I can really do in the moment is spend it to get two workers. Okay, that was not the best, but let's see what happens next. Really? Three sixes. Three sixes. And I had my eye on that thing, too. Well, I can adjust up by one. Oh, I could have done that last time, too. Oh, well. Adjust up by one. Going to a one. Because you can go either way. And then I'm going to put this in here. I'm just going to complete that section, which gets me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine points. One plus eight. And then the action for that is to grab a building tile. And there's only one left, so I'm going to grab that up. And then for my other six, this is getting crazy. There's not really anything I can do with my other six right now. Well, I can adjust up twice. That's going to have to be it. I'm going to adjust all the way up to a two. In order to place this here. I'm going to immediately change it out for one of these. And now I get to do any action I want to, as if I had that particular dice. And this one, I believe, allows you to grab a tile, a building tile, and place it into your key. Yeah, you spend two workers to take a building tile as an ongoing effect. I could grab that. I could grab... I need to start expanding again. I really need to start expanding again. So actually, I'm going to... Oh, that goes there. I'm going to grab one of those so I can start expanding out. Okay, a six and a four. I messed that one up a bit. And then five. So that goes away. I kind of have an eye on that one, but oh well. So with a six and a four, I need to start placing things if I can. And I can. I'm going to use the four. Ooh. Oh, no, it's fine. No, it's not a fine. It's not as fine as I thought. I think expanding is more important than... No, no. I'm going to do my original thought. Put that in for the four. I get two money. This is getting away from the money area. And then I'm also going to score that for eight plus one is nine. So we go up to 36. And then with that six, again... Not useful for me in the moment. I want to hold on to this wild tile as long as I can to figure out what I need it for. And so... Oh, with the six, I could grab the piggies here. Yeah, maybe I'll grab the piggies with the six. Boom, like that. And then that's the end of that round. We clear off any tiles. Okay, I didn't bring this up before, but in the building regions, the beige regions, you can't have two of the same uh, building unless you have a monastery that comes out that does that. And so I just wanted to throw that out there because I realized I hadn't said that yet. Okay, let's go ahead and get into this new round. And let's start off with a roll. By the way, we have a special building that came out here in the uh, black market here which is a crane, and that one allows you to trigger the effect of any building. So it's going to go on the 6. And bye-bye Watchtower, which gives you 4 points when you place it. Now we've got to figure out what we're doing. I can put those in with the 6. Go in the right place. Um... Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Putting the piggies in with the six. They get three points for the pigs. One, two, three. And we get 
one point for completing the area, and we get six for doing it in this round. One, two, three, four, five is all we needed. And so now we get to take a action of any number that we want. And I'm feeling like taking the mine while the taking's good. Oh, and I forgot to give myself the gold for my mine. Let's take that mine. And then for the three, I can't take anything because my key place is full. And I don't want to get rid of anything, of course. So I think I'm just going to get two workers. Okay, we've got two sixes and a five. Why do we keep rolling so many sixes? And I'm glad I got that mine when I did. Because it would have gone away just then. I'm going to make this a five. By getting rid of a worker. So that I can place the mine. And then the six. Grab some sheep. Not all I can do in the moment. Or get more workers. I'm going to grab the sheep tile here. And hope I roll better. Have you ever considered just rolling better? Three, five, and one. I just messed up this tower of goods trying to roll better. Okay, so the three. I'm gonna go here. Bye bye, sheepies. I'm getting just slightly not the number I want, but I'm gonna make it work. So I'm going to spend a worker to turn. A five into a four, so I can place the ship down. And we never did get three on any depot. We got a lot that had two on them. Hoping one of them would get three. So I'm just going to take from this depot, and all these go away. And I still only have four right now, so I don't get to take that bonus action. But I did fill this, so I get one point for that, plus another six. It's going to go to seven. And then with the one. I can grab either of those things. Got a lot of brown areas coming up, so I'm going to grab this with the one. Although I just realized there's a lot of brown I could buy up there. You know what? I'm going to go with the ship area. I need I, I need to expand still. I got a one and a two and a one. So this is going to go in the one area, and that goes bye bye. And then I got a one, so I can use that for the ship I just grabbed. Expanding out. And so I get one point plus another six. So it's going to take us all the way up to 14. I get to grab this. And we go ahead and trade in five goods, exchange five goods to grab one of these tiles and make it a. Wild tile. And then with the two, maybe I just throw down one of the wild tiles. Do that or get workers. Now I'm going to get workers. I don't know where I want to put the wild tile in the moment. I'm thinking I'm going to need it on monasteries. And none of those work for monasteries. Four, one, and six. So four. Ship goes away. I didn't care about the ship anyway right now. And so I have a six and a one. I guess I'm spending a worker. Put that there. Or do I just put it? Maybe I put it on a castle area. Then two workers, I could put it on a boat area. Wouldn't get the boat benefit, but I don't know that I care because I'm not going to get five anyway. You know what? That's what I'm going to do. Finish out my boats. I won't have to worry about them anymore, and I'll have everything connected. Okay. When do I spend? You spend two for that. So that's going to become a three. 
doing a while there. Now I can connect all of this, which means I can use the six to put the sheep right here on the six. Just score me three for the sheep. Okay. Not how I wanted to use that wild, but it opened things up. Oh, and I just rolled and <laughs> we're going into a new round. Well, that'll be the official roll for the round. So six, two, and one. Oh, and I get two for my two silver for my mines. I need to start using the silver and buying stuff. And that was the round. Oh, I forgot to clean these ones out. And put new out. Oh, they're at the end. Should I have bought one of them? Had the money. No, I'm going to buy the crane at the end of the last round. I'm completely forgetting to buy stuff. That's going to go on there. I can trigger any effect. I am going to trigger the one that allows me to pick a tile. That is a mine or a castle or a monastery. I'm going to do the castle. That was sit. No, that was the two. Now for the six, I'm going to go after cows. I'm going to grab some cows. No, I'm going to grab the bank. No, the cows. Cows. Final answer. Now I need some one, some two, or one. A one and a two or a one and a four would be great. A three, a two, and the wrong four. That's going to go there and that goes away. Okay, so three or two. Two can go here. So I'm going to use the two to put the cows in, make some room here. I get three points for the cows. Three doesn't get me what I want there, but I think I'm going to grab a building for the three. I need to get these monasteries in. I keep neglecting my monasteries. Grab that building for, for the three. Six, six, and three. Can't do anything with a six. So I'm going to trade a six in for two workers. And with that six. That would give me more workers. Okay. So this is going to become a two by spinning these two. Then I'm going to put this in. Right. Oh, no. I can, put, I can spin one. I can spin one. Put it here. Then I'm going to get four workers out of that. There we go. No, oh, that became a one. Okay. Oh, and I scored this area. That's going to be five points. One, two, three, four, five. It's four plus one. Six and three and two. Uh, one in that monastery. Um, I just need to go after a monastery just because I haven't gotten them. Let's spend one of these to make this a five and grab the monastery. And then the three can place it. The only place I can place a three monastery and I was there. Four, a three, and we got a three going here. So I'm going to use the four to place that there, which gives me... Again, I score one, two, three, four, plus one is five. And then I get the red action, which is any dice I want. I'm going to grab this mine up as if I had a five. And then that three. I'm going to up it by one. Wait, am I going to do that? Wait, let me see. Let me see what other options are. I still need to spend money on stuff. I'm actually going to spend two coins 
to grab this boarding house. And then I'm going to spend one worker, turn that to a four. It was a three, wasn't it? Yeah, turn that to a four. I want it here. Span that way. That's going to give me four of these back. And now I have a stockpile of workers. That's the end of the round. Uh, my lack of monasteries, I think, is just may have just lost me the game. But we shall see. I need to draw a bunch of monasteries out of this bag. Not a monastery. Not a monastery. Also, not monasteries. So I'm pretty sure I just lost. Unless I can figure out another way to get two more monasteries that aren't already out there. At least I didn't steal a monastery yet. So, I mean, obviously I need to spend the two here to grab a monastery. And the six. I'm going to adjust down to a five. To put out this monastery, which allows me to uh, spend, whenever I do the, spend a dice to get two workers, I get a silver. Oh, I forgot to grab the silver for my mines. I haven't finished any colors yet, have I now? Six. No, I need to get that castle too. Let's make that a two. Get the castle. And the five will let me put the mine in. Six, two, and one. So with the two, I'm going to put a castle in. I'm going to complete the castle section. We can get our one, two, three points. Plus for completing the castles, I can go ahead and take anything out of here, put it directly into my duchy, taking the benefit. Let's go ahead and do this one here. And it's going to give me a building. Go ahead and let's go ahead and take this building. And then for the one, I can make it two. Oh, wait, yeah. Put this here. I get to do the white die action with this one. It's a six. I guess I can adjust it down to a five to get this. And that's all I can do in that turn. Six, two, and one. Boom. I have no buildings either. What have I been doing? I mean, just that up one to a three. I'm just been two of these to get this. Then I can adjust it down one to put it here. It's going to give me four workers. And I'm going to spend three workers. Make that a three. 
be able to get these. And of course it's a three. The only thing I actually still needed that was on the board is it doesn't really matter anyway. I've lost. I just try to maximize things. Let's go one, two, three, four, five for the cows. Spend a gold just to make that six. That goes there. That comes there. Get a free action. Which means I'm going to place this. Here, just so I can finish the color off. It's going to get me... Oh, and for these greens, though, I'm getting... Um, six points plus two points is eight. And then for that, I get one, two, three. And then I have a five. Oh, and I get one of these, but I can't use them. So I lost terribly because I completely ignored my monasteries, somehow didn't get enough animals, and fell a building short that they basically just stole from me there at the end. That's how you play, not ideally, but that is how you play Castles of Burgundy, the solo mode. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's taught you how simple it is to employ this, and uh, I'll catch you in the next video.